Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we have got episode number 48 for you all. And we are here. We are post All Star break. And uh, we're deep, deep into the season. It's the, the last stretch. We see we got it pulled up on the screen here. Today, we are going to be talking about the race to the finish line. Um, about 30 ish games to go for a lot of these teams here left in the association. Um, and these are when they really start to matter more than any other point in the year. So we're going to go through some teams and some players that we think are going to be important to watch here down the stretch. Some of the biggest risers in the standings and some of the teams that we think are going to fall off. Um, and before we get into all of that, of course, because we're coming out of all-star break, we do have to go over what was a pretty atrocious all-star weekend from start to finish, bro. Like <laughs> maybe the worst all-star weekend that I can remember of our lifetime be honest with you as a whole um, weekend it's up there for sure definitely got to be up there before we get into all that though gonna get the housekeeping out of the way if you are on youtube like comment subscribe to the channel if you're listening on our audio platforms be sure to pre-download the show and leave a five-star rating it helps us out a ton and then follow us on the socials that you see there at the bottom at off the glass pod on instagram and at off the glass podcast on tiktok before we get into that, how are we doing today, Dame? How are we feeling coming out of the All Star break? <clears throat> Lakers took a, a tough dub, a tough L, excuse me, last night. But but no LeBron, you know he's had to, got the ankle injury. But if your ankle yeah. is hurt, why are you playing an All Star game? Ah, he ain't had no an ankle injury, bro. He was hungover, bro. He was hungover. <laughs> yeah, you when you hungover, get older, hungover from from Indiana, bro. Bro, when you get older, you know it take you mad long to recover when you get older. So yeah, he was a little bit hungover. He was like, nah, I'm gonna sit this one out so we can go on our stretch one, get a top six seat top six seed and we'd be good so other than that no I'm, I'm doing fine i'm doing good fair fair with that though let, let's talk about all-star weekend because um it, it's been highly talked about i know if y'all are listening to this you you've seen tweets you've heard people talk about it espn wherever you're getting your your sports news sports talk from all around it really doesn't matter how you slice it this was a very underwhelming all-star break like we said, from start to finish, um, I don't really. I, do you ever care for the celebrity game? I I don't. Nah, I mean I'll like see clips on Twitter, but like I'm right. not like fully watching it. I'm not tuning in. I'm not ever. I don't care who's in it. Like no disrespect, just that's not an event I'm looking forward to. Right. Um, uh, the the Rising Stars game that was I, I that was cool this year. I, I like how they've switched up the format due to little. Four team bracket style, um, you know, has some nice flashes in there. Wemby doing crazy stuff. Um, Benedict Matherin and Jane Ivy was going at it, and they little, you know, one on ones. Uh, and the G League team was scrapping it out almost, you know, they made it all the way to the final game and, and was pushing them all the way to the brink. So that was honestly probably the best, like, full scale event of All Star mm-hmm. Weekend, which is that's sad. a little sad, bro. That's a little sad. <laughs> that's sad to say. Um, the big, I don't, well, what do you think is a bigger disappointment? All-Star Saturday night or the All-Star game itself? I mean, honestly, the All-Star game, because of the way it was last year and because of the way it's kind of been, I kind of expected it to be like a, just a three-point shootout. Because that's what it's kind of turning into. It's just like, all right, mm-hmm. the coolest thing we have is Dame hitting half-court shots. That's the coolest thing we have in the All-Star game. Nobody's playing defense. It's it's free lanes to the rim. Everybody getting wide open threes. It's like, all right, cool. Let's, we we get to see everyone's shooting ability. That's what the All Star game is now. But the dunk contest is like you have hope for it every year. That it's like you know if the dunk contest is good. It low key it could make or break the whole All Star weekend. Like if it's a fire dunk contest, it it, it makes the whole weekend seem like it was a good All Star weekend, which is which is good. Um, if we're talking about Saturday night as a whole. I think the, the three point contest was solid. Like I think it was good. Um, the little Steph Sabrina stuff was cool. Like I like that. Um, but yeah, honestly, if the dunk contest is not good, bro, it ruins everything. So I, I say that's the biggest disappointment because I don't know. I, I don't know how you feel. To me, it, I I didn't get out of my seat once. I didn't go. I only went like oh one time, and that was the dunk the judges messed Mac McClung up on. So it's right. like that was to me that was the best dunk of the night. And then the it judges was. treated it like it was some regular like rim grazer. So. Yeah, the dunk contest was was the biggest disappointment for me. Yeah, the I I think for me, like you said, the expectations for the All Star game were already low. 
we'll get to that. That so, they somehow managed to still like underwhelm me, even though I was not expecting much with how that game was played. But Saturday night, Mac McClung coming back, you know, saved the dunk contest, whatever you want to call it. He had a great showing last year. Um, the dunk that he did, he jump over somebody, like, threw the ball up, caught it midair, dunked it. Never that seen was fire. That was that fire. Shit, the fact that that's not a fifty is crazy. That's insane, yeah. bro. We giving Jalen Brown, he out here with the Michael Jackson glove. Like, come on, bro. Who are these judges, bro? No disrespect to them. Like, obviously, like Dominique and stuff was up there, but what are we doing here, bro? I should let me not say who are the judges, but what are we doing, bro? Yeah, they 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 the judges did not help. The judges ru- kind of ruined it because him and then Obi Toppin's brother had a f- another fire dunk. 360 East Bay, like. Get it? I don't understand how. Like, what is? What are we ranking this off of at this point? And why are we? What happened to judges giving a one through ten? Why are yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Why are they giving forty seven and forty eight? Everybody just give one through ten. You add it together. What? Is, he he got a forty seven point six on the dunk. Jalen Brown got a forty eight point one. He going to the next round. This yeah, is dumb. It, like it don't, it don't make no sense. You're you're complicating things. And honestly, I this is what I feel like. I feel like the whole dunk contest from everyone's standpoint is being like you're making it too complicated. The judges, like you said, one through ten, simple. Even if it's a dunk we've seen before, if they do it nice or if they do it right. in a way that like you change them up a little bit. Come on, bro. Like, give them their respect. It's like the judges want, or the judges and everybody seem like they want people to like go out there and do like triple back flip dunks like stuff that's like physically impossible there's right. some stuff that we haven't seen that's possible and that's what i mean when i say also the dunkers are making stuff too complicated because it's like bro y'all doing too much of the antics for not a good enough dunk bro like Jalen right. brown the left hand i get it people say you don't got no left ha 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 that don't make it a good dunk bro that's not <laughs> that's not a good dunk. right but this man jumped over kai sinat sitting down like Bro, what, bro? City, bro, bro. No joke. You and I could do that. Now we're not gonna finish the dunk, but I think both of us are jump clearing Kai yeah. Sinat sitting <laughs> in a chair, bro. I said we could jump over Kai Sinat. Like that is not that wasn't impressive at all. And the fact that you added in the little like you were like it had your but eyes after closed. you dunk the ball, you're doing the little trying to do the D Brown blindfold yourself dunk. You Yo. already dunked the ball, like botched the whole thing, bro. And it was the second attempt too. They messed up the lob in the first attempt. Like that might be the that honestly is up there for one of the worst like dunks in 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 ever in, right. in NBA dunk contest history, bro. Just because of everything that led up to it, it was so bad. But it's just I feel like with the dunk contest, everyone no no one's like creative in the sense of like trying to do dunks we haven't seen. Like everyone is just like. I'm going to dunk with Tim's on. I'm going to dunk with a glove. I'm going to bring out this dude, bring out that dude, put a mm-hmm. jersey on. It's like, y'all doing all this extra stuff, but, like, the dunk is, like, boring. Like, the dunk doesn't right. match all the antics. Like, you right. ever see those, like, professional dunkers that be on, like, the uh, like mm-hmm. TikTok or Twitter or whatever? They Maybe. still, to this day, be doing stuff we've never seen in a dunk contest. I seen a dude the other day do, he did, like, a 540 and dunked it behind his back. Bro, I seen... <laughs> I, I watched, remember, I, I think I sent it to you. It was one TikTok. It was just a minute long, and it was at least 10 dunks I've never seen before ever in my life. And I was right. like, bro, no, like, these NBA dudes are not creative at all. Like, you telling me none of y'all can really pull this off? I, I guarantee, if this guy can do it, I guarantee you some of y'all with the crazy verticals can actually do some of the stuff he's doing. Right. So, yeah, but I think people are just not creative. Even to that point, though, I don't even care, like, if you just do good dunks, you should get 50s. It's still going to get the crowd hype. The energy is still going to be there. It's going to be entertaining to the fans if you're just doing good dunks. What mm-hmm. you were talking about, like you said, the people coming out with Tim's. Remember Jalen Green dunk with the NFT chain? Like, like the what, iPhone? Like, like it got so much about? of like a performance. Like, right. But you lost the actual, like what you're here to do. Like the dunks are whack. We don't care if you dunked in Tim's. You did a whack dunk, bro. bro like people, you like even like, Old like back in the day, like people used to bring out. Remember, like dude brought out like two rims, dunked on mm-hmm. two different hoops, um, dunk with three, two, three basketballs. Like you, if you're gonna do something with antics, do it with the dunk, like not like the extra stuff, like 
right. besides the dunk. I don't know. People are just you're overthinking it, bro. You're really just overthinking it. Like you said, you're making it more of a performance, and that's not what it is, bro. I want to see a good dunk, bro. I don't care if you, bro. I don't care if you go out there in a tank top, it's a baggy shorts. I don't care what you look like. Dunk, right. do a nice dunk, bro. <laughs> right. I will be totally okay if the dunk contest from this past weekend, every single dunk that they did, we seen every single one of them before, but they were all good dunks, quality dunks. They're not taking four or five tries to get them done. Like good dunks, intensity. Like I promise you the crowd would be in it if the judges was being normal, like and and calling it how they should. The energy in the arena would have been good and it would have been a good dunk contest. But like I said, the performative stuff, like that's got to go. We we got to get back to just people going into the dunk contest. And, bro, just do good dunks. I don't care if they've been done before at this point. If you can find something that's creative and still a good dunk, do it. But do not go so far outside of the lane trying to do something that you never never been done or try to make it bigger than what it is, and it just waters it down itself. Like, mm. I, it's, it's really a shame, bro, because, like you said, Jacob Toppin's dunk, that was a fire dunk. He should have been in the finals. They gave it to Jalen Brown, who still props to him for being the first all-star to be in a dunk contest in, like, whatever it was, like, five, six years at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was bad, bro. Not feeling any of his dunks, bro. I, honestly, when, like, I wanted to give I want to give him credit for, like, obviously, like you said, being an all-star and actually doing the dunk contest. But even when they said Jalen Brown was doing it, I'm like, Jalen Brown's not a creative dunker. Like, that. Jalen Brown's never a guy that I was like, he should be in the dunk contest. Like, he's an in-game dunk. Like, he's like, I can dunk on you. I can dunk with some power, like, in-game, yeah. But he was never like a guy that I'm like, yeah, he should definitely do a dunk contest. But, never. like I said, I give him credit because he's an all-star that actually, you know, decided to do it. So, I respect right. him in that aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully at least the more, you know, actually, you know, dunk contest worthy people starting to do it, that's still, like, you know, all-star level or, like, even higher than that, like, superstar level. Because, bro, it can be really good. And I also just think the fact that, like, people, like, the, the superstars treat it like, I'm not doing a dunk contest. When it used to be, everybody wants to do the dunk contest, bro. If you're a superstar and you're, like, of that level and you can dunk, everybody wanted to do a dunk contest. Now right. it's just seen as, like. This- they literally had to get two G leaguers to fill out the dunk contest. Right. It's, like, bro, you tell me in the whole league, you can't get somebody with a big enough name that can dunk that you got to get a G leaguer, bro. Two of them and a rookie. Like, bro, it's crazy, bro. It's like, and honestly, I, ca- I guess it kind of goes into the whole All-Star weekend. The players don't care about nothing. Like, it's like every, the whole weekend's an afterthought. Like, if you think about it, nobody mm-hmm. wants to do the dunk contest. Honestly, the only people, only the stuff people really get up for is the three-point contest. Like, they, they actually go out there and they try and they, and they have, like, big names that want to be in it. But other than could that, you imagine? Like, could you imagine telling yourself as a kid what you just said that the three point contest is the biggest event of All Star Weekend, bro? That, it's so because as a kid, the dunk contest was great and the All Star game was great. Now right. it's like you got nobody wants to be in the dunk contest in the, dunk contest in the first place. You can forget about like the rising, not the rising star, like the skill challenge. We got Ant shooting with his left hand. You can just forget <laughs> about that. Like they, they, they do not care about that one. Yeah, no. I got people. They got missing layups. Like they don't care at all about that one. And then the All Star Game is like, all right, cool. We're just gonna go out here. We're gonna shoot some threes. That's it. We don't even get cool dunks no more. It's just we just shooting threes. That's all it is. Shout out, uh, shout out, Cat. At least he tried to tweak out a little bit in the fourth quarter, bro. What happened to the little for every towards the end of the game, like back to back dunks on both sides? We didn't even get that. We don't. Yeah, we don't get that, bro. Like I told you, they don't care. It's like, I, and I don't even know what you can do with people. They people don't care. We got the bro. We got the best players in the world that don't care. Like, honestly, if you just watch the dunk contest, or not dunk contest, the all-star game, say you didn't watch basketball, you just watched the all-star game. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd i say, yo, who do you think is the best player on this court right now? You would not think it was, like, Jokic who out there, he's just doing whatever. You wouldn't think it could have been, like, Luka who's just shooting. Definitely not full Luka. Court shot. That's what I'm saying. Like, bro, these are the best. Jokic is the best player in this whole game. He's, like, he don't care. He's just doing whatever. Great, right. his game doesn't kind of translate to an all star mm-hmm. game, but still, yeah. I'm just saying, like, they the guys don't care, like, at all. Even the young guys now that's supposed to, you know, it, it, it'd be different if it was the older guys that kind of they've done a bunch of all star games, they've been here before, like, they'll play for a little bit and then they'll, you know, sit down. The young guys supposed to come in, 
and like go hard, actually go at it. Even the young guys is like, all right, it is what it is, bro. I'm just shooting some threes, maybe catch a dunk here and there. That's about it. Do what do you think there's anything they can do? Like people have tossed around different ideas about adding incentives to the game, like to try to make it more competitive. Like you shouldn't. They didn't used to have incentives early two thousands and bro, all star game scores used to be like higher than like the normal scores at the time, but like one thirty one forty. Right, what the All Star Game scores used to be back then, that's kind of like what the normal NBA score is on a nightly basis now. That's fact. And obviously, that's just due to spacing and stuff. But even if like take the box score away from it, like watching the games, bro, people used to go at it, bro. For sure. Did Kobe broke his nose in all like D Wade fouled him in the <clears throat> face in an All Star Game before? Because it used to be. All right, we're going to the All-Star game. We're going to see who the best player on this court is. Like, who are the best players in the league? Now it's like, like I said, the best player on the court does not want to be there. So, right. like, they don't they don't go at it anymore. And I don't really know. What, like, you can add all the little, you know, extra stuff you want to try to get them to go at it. Like, I had an idea that was like, I think I, I might have told you. Like, they could do, like, some sort of, like, like, a spotlight for, like, a couple minutes to where, like, they spotlight two people on each or one person on each team and those people have to go at it for like a two minute two minutes whatever like they got to go right. at it to add some sort of like competitiveness like you know even um the all-star game last year was terrible but i guess the best part of it was when jalen brown and jason tatum were like kind of going at it a little bit like it mm-hmm. adds some competitiveness add some fun to it as that little like one-on-one type of vibe that people have been asking for um but even then it's like i don't think people really go that hard because they don't have no real reason to all right and I, I get it like you your team season comes first and foremost and so like you don't want to do anything to jeopardize your health in an all-star game that at the end of the day is meaningless after that weekend but like i don't know bro at this point like the product is bad it's a bad product you could tell like i, I made the video but like adam silver was tight bro he's not feeling how that game went down and there's a lot of money that gets pumped into this weekend by sponsors and stuff like that. So they got to figure something out. I really don't know what the best move is. I, it shouldn't have to be a, a money incentive like the in-season tournament is. I've seen people toss around the idea that the MLB, I don't know if they still have it, but at least they used to, where it's like the winner of the All-Star game gets home court in the World Series. Like, I don't like that. That All right, that feels like it's tough after having that not be the precedent for so many years. Like, I don't like that. It adds just too. no, it adds a different factor to that. Doesn't matter when it comes to the actual regular season and who's playing well and who's not. I don't really like that, but I think, um, I have, I have kind of a question. I didn't, I definitely didn't come up with this take. I just heard it before, but basically, do you feel like it possibly could be the media's fault as to why, guys don't go hard in the all-star game like when you really think about it it's like when you talk when you look on like sports uh talk shows just the media just everyone in general the discourse around mainly like players mainly like superstar players it's really like what do you do in the playoffs did you do you have a ring nothing else like your awards don't matter it's like people get on mb where it's like he got an mvp deserve it or not but it's like he didn't do nothing in the playoffs it's like when people hear people talk about like shea People try to give Shea, like, the credit that he rightfully deserves, like, great young player, averaging 30, mm-hmm. going crazy. When you go on, like, Twitter or something, it's like, what has he done in the playoffs? He hasn't even made the playoffs yet. It's like, that I don't that shouldn't stop me from giving this guy credit. So it's right. like a lot of NBA discourse is so much, it's like, what do you do in the playoffs? Do you have a win or a ring? Do you Did you win that, like, nothing else matters? So the players are like, all right, cool. If nothing else matters, it's like, why am I going so hard in the All-Star game? Like, cause you're not gonna give me no credit if I go out there and, and win All Star MVP. Like, you're not gonna give me no sort of credit. Honestly, you'll probably use right. it against me. It's like, oh, you're going hard in the All Star game, but what'd you do in the playoffs? Like, you'll probably use it against me. So, yeah, I don't know if that's kind of not part of it, but it maybe ties into it a little bit. I don't know. I was just curious to hear your thoughts on it. No, nah, it definitely does, and like that actually is like a perfect segue into like what I want to talk about next, which was what JJ Reddick kind of said on first take. But just like where the NBA fan ecosystem sits right now is like 
it's bottom feeding. Like it's it's bad. It's like you mm-hmm. really have to you gotta understand the narratives that begin pushed by the media as a whole. So like what JJ Reddick said on first take, I think well, to backtrack all the way on Monday, he did a pod uh with the dunker spot where they talked about three teams that they were, you know, keeping their eye on post all-star break. And one of the teams that they talked about was the Pelicans and JJ did like a five or 10 minute breakdown about how the last like month and a half, two months, they've been using Zion at the one more. It's really done a ton of great things for their spacing. They've been doing a lot of pick and rolls between him and Herb Jones. And they're the only two kind of negative shooters on the court. But that means like you literally can't help off of anybody else some of the spacing is like so perfect if you can get those two in action. Super in-depth X's and O's breakdown, right? He's like, that video got like 50, 60,000 views. He went on first take like the next day and went off on Doc Rivers talking about he don't, you know, he doesn't take accountability for some of his faults as a coach. That blew up, went viral. Everybody's reposting it. It's got like 10 million views off of first take. Um, and he was like, like, this is the current state of how media is. And like, can't really fault it because it's a two way street. Like the media pushes it because that's what the fans are consuming. Like they are into the drama and like that drama stems back into the legacy debates that you always hear, or always having to move goalposts for guys or always talking about rings or playoff success, like not being able to, like you said, how are we going to go at Shea? For lack of playoff success, when could he have made the playoffs before this year? <laughs> right. <laughs> what are we like? What are we talking about? That's just being intentionally, like, like you're missing the whole point of, like, you're. It's not even like you're talking about basketball at this point. You're literally just talking about rings. You're just talking about. That's really it. But like, you're not appreciating the sport, the players, like the actual nuances of the game that people do night in, night out. And that's okay if you don't – I'm not saying you've got to be into the X's and O's like crazy to enjoy the game of basketball, but I also think you are doing a disservice to yourself as a fan and vice versa if, as the media to the fans if that is so much of what you're focused on is just legacy debates. What is this guy's rings – you know, how does he hold up? How does his resume hold up all time? Who's the greatest point guard of all? Like, those kinds of conversations 24-7, like, it's just noise, bro. It's just noise. Yeah, 100%. It's just, that's just, I mean, that's just where it's at right now, you know, as far as, like, what people want to talk about or listen to. Like I said, a lot of people, <clears throat> y'all not, like, NBA fans aren't real basketball fans. NBA fans are NBA fans because they like the, drama that comes with it they like the extra stuff that comes with it they don't actually like basketball you know what i mean they just always right. like the, the legacy talk the debates the drama everything everything that comes with it they don't actually like the x's and o's part of it like i said which is fine because there's definitely more casual fans than there right. are you know like super like x's and o's guys but i feel like there has to be a way that the casual fan could just watch it without making everything about rings and debates and things like that like just Sit back and enjoy the game. Just, just watch basketball. It's really not that hard, but it's tough because that's kind of – like you said, it, it goes both ways because it's like that's what they sh- get shown. That's also what you consume. So it's like how do you even fix that, you know? So, yeah, I agree. Right. It's, it's just – it's tough because there's no real way to fix it, I feel like. It's crazy because, like, what you just said, if somebody came out and was just, like, a casual fan, they were like – Dang, bro, Shea's really nice. Like, he's really been hooping this year. Somebody's genuine response to that could be, I mean, I guess, but he ain't really done nothing in the playoffs, though. Like, that, you didn't, those two things shouldn't even go back to back. Nothing the first guy said had anything to do about the playoffs. Literally then, just was talking about his play in the season, this year, where the playoffs haven't started yet. And, uh, the, and this is the thing when it comes to guys – winning awards and you use it against them it's like if Shea makes first team all nba they'll be like yeah two first team all nbas with what what has he done in the playoffs to deserve that he shouldn't get that yet until he's done something in the playoffs it's like 
Why? That's a regular season award. What does that have to do with that's anything? A, that's in an individual award, and you're right. talking about team success. Those are two different things, bro. Dude shouldn't make the All Star game. Look at his look at his team's record. I don't, bro. What is he's playing well himself? That has not, the All Star game is not not about who has the best record, bro. That's not what it's about. It's about who's playing the best individually. So it's like that's what I mean when got when it's like they'll use an award or like something you did well at, against you in a weird way. Like that, it, that's not how it should be. Instead of talking you up, they'll use it to like tear you down. Like instead of saying, like, all right, you got all these all NBAs, all all stars, but with no rings, it's not like, hey, he, he doesn't, it should be like, oh yeah, he doesn't have a ring, but it's like he made all NBA, he's an all star, like he's a really good player. They don't do it in that aspect. They use your accolades and awards that you made to kind of tear you down. And that's not how it should be. It shouldn't be like that at all. Look, like I said, that's really, really where it is. And not even just for basketball, it's like sports media has been going that direction. And like I said, it's, it's entertaining. You see the clips from first take. I laugh at them. I watch them from time to time. Like I'll throw it on in the background for background noise when I'm doing work or something. Like I get it, but there are people who that is literally their whole mindset on how they view not just sports, but like specifically basketball. It's through the lenses of those types of debates, nonstop, twenty four seven. And again, that go all right. They go back to the two way street. They view it that way because that's what's always being pushed out, and it's like vice versa. It's a constant cycle, bro. I also feel like leg legacy debate should be reserved for like guys of that stratosphere at the time, like Jordan, LeBron. Yeah, they have a little debate, count the rings. Like if you want to have a debate, like I get it, that's fine. Right. But a guy, a guy in his what fifth year, like just broke out. Like, why are we talking about his legacy or like his playoff win? His career not even close to done. Like, what are we talking about? That should be reserved for like end of your career, or unless you're a guy that's like like Mahomes right now or something like that. Like he's obviously he's not near the end of his career, but right. he's winning at such a great like high rate that you got to start comparing. His resume right now stacks up to he could retire right now today as a first ballot Hall of Famer. Off of the strength of that, you can start having that. Right. You be talking about it's guys, bro. Shay, I don't even. Luca's not even twenty five yet. Like he's been in the league for a long time. He's technically not in his prime yet. <laughs> yeah, I have debates about where he ranks all time and compare him to this player, compare him to that player. It's not. It's just stop. Relax. Just. Let let their careers play out. Let everything play out, and just be in the moment. Because that's the problem. A lot of people are not in the moment to where they could just sit and actually enjoy stuff. They always want something to hate, something to mm -hmm. root for, something to discredit. Like, just let everything play out. Just be in the moment and enjoy people's careers. That's the honestly, that's the best way to watch basketball. When you stop hating stuff or like rooting against things, I, I mean, if you got rivals, I have teams you don't like. I get it, whatever. But like besides that, you're talking about general just sports watching, if you stop right. just hating stuff it's so easy to just sit back and just enjoy like greatness like it's so easy it's just that easy bro we're gonna leave it on that but crazy 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 stuff um with that though let's get into some of our teams to watch here after the all-star break um i'll go ahead and go first team that played last night um they've been on a nice little tear let me pull up their what their current win streak is, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is the Dallas Mavericks. Um, obviously, they made the, the moves at the deadline that we talked about, bringing in P.J. Washington um, and Daniel Gafford as well and getting off of Grant Williams' contract. They're on a seven-game win streak, obviously going back before um, the All-Star break, and then they got a 10-point win last night over the Suns. Luka, again, just bullies the Suns every time he Thanks. plays them. Um, dropped 41 on them last night. Um, him and Kyrie combined for 70. They're going to be a very, very hard team to beat if they can combine for 70. And I'm going to ask you this question first because this really, in a way, tells a story of how far you think they could go. Do you think that Luka and Kyrie could combine for 70 four out of seven games? Can they? Yeah, <laughs> they could, for sure. Hard to beat. It. Hard to beat it. A team in a series where their top two players are giving you seventy four times. Luca is 
capable, not saying it's going to happen. He is capable of averaging 40 in a series. He's capable of averaging high 30s. In I'm pretty a series. sure he's like, done it before. I probably. That's what I'm saying. He probably had. Um, but yeah, no, Luca is of that level to where he can definitely be the guy, like like a not just the guy as in like you're the first option, cool, you average a, like a good amount of points. Like, no, he's like a huge difference maker to where one of them guys that if you don't have one of them those level of superstars you're not winning a chip he's at that level then you add in Kyrie Irving who's like the one of the best number twos as far as just an, a scoring option someone that can relieve mm-hmm. a little bit of pressure off of them and then you know you add in size you add in versatility you add in defense that they did at the deadline to where he actually has a good roster around them and not just player wise just meaning a good roster that fits with their play style um, and gives them just more options, like as far as offensive versatility, more rim protection, things like things of that nature. The Mavericks are very scary, like very, very scary. Like they're a team that I could see going on like just a run as far as the end of the season and just getting hot and then mm-hmm. going into the playoffs. If they like obviously not like saying they're going to win all their games, but they continue at this level of play to where they end the season on a really good note, they're really hot, they stay healthy. I, they could honestly, they could Loki be anybody in the Western Conference because they have the superstar. They have the guy that could take you there. That like, I'm not saying he's as good as like Jokic, but just on that type of level of player with a good roster around him. You saw what he did when he basically kind of carried them to the Western Conference Finals on his back. You know, so yeah, I had a better roster around him with a solidified number two. They're scary, bro. Like I, mm-hmm. like I said, they can beat anybody in the West. Yeah. What I what I really love about the, the moves that they made, too, and I think they highlighted it on the broadcast last night. Um, Derek Lively is still on a minutes restriction. I think he broke his nose or messed mm-hmm. up something in his face, um, but it allows him to be significantly more aggressive in his minutes, because if he does get into foul trouble, it's like, all right, we still have Gaffer that we can bring in. who We know is going to be able to kind of man the paint up, especially on the defensive side of the ball, quality rebounder. Even if he got into foul trouble, too, you still are sitting on Dwight Powell. So it's like they've got a lot of big depth now that mm-hmm. really kind of frees him up to, to play a little bit more openly, which I love for him. Um, P.J. Washington is already bringing the spacing um, that we knew that he would. Yeah, if those two guys are getting hot like this, it's, it's, they're just going to be tough to beat, bro. They're just going to be a tough, tough team to beat. Um yeah. Yeah, I just also gonna say they've and they've got wing defenders too. Like they they filled a lot of those gaps that they needed to fill both in free agency and at the the deadline. So they're they're looking like a really complete deep roster right now. And like you said, they're getting hot at the right time going down the stretch, and they might shoot up the Western Conference standings and, and look to go for a deep deep push. A lot of times, you've seen especially with those like super high level superstars. When you have the best player on the floor, it's it's easier for you to win a series. In the West, besides Jokic, they would have the best player on the floor every single in every team they play, along with a good team around. I mean, obviously it's arguable, but to me, they'd have the best player on the floor in every series they'd play, along with a great number two and a solid roster around them. That is very scary. Very, very. Yeah, the and only the one that you team. really would argue with is maybe Shea, but other than other than Shea and Jokic, I think he probably is clear in a way going to be the best player on the court. And is a playoff riser. It's not like you know the guy he stays at the level he is. He actually ups his game in the playoffs, which is right. You know they're scary, man. <laughs> they're they're for sure a scary team to play. Yeah, so I'm definitely definitely a team to to look out for. They are they are complete. They're hot. They're they're checking all the boxes at the the right time. Hundred um, percent. You got a team that you uh, you want to talk about? Yeah, I got a, I got a team that it's a it's an interesting conversation. It's not on the level of the Mavericks where I feel like they can, you know, I, I still don't think this team can go on a crazy run. I just want to talk about them as far as like changes that they've made and what you think their end of the season outlook is going to be, and that's the Warriors. Now, we've talked about the Warriors on this podcast, I feel like, a lot. And was not a fan of a lot of the stuff they do. Um, one of the things they do have going for them, they added, you know, Jonathan Kaminga to the lineup. They put Clay to the bench. And they're just running that lineup. I believe it's what was it Steph, 
um, Kaminga, Draymond, Wiggins, and, and I'm AirPods. His name. AirPods, yeah. Oh, there we go. Mm-hmm. And they're playing well. They're playing defense, which is a really a big thing. You know, since Draymond's yeah. come back, their defense has really stepped it up. And obviously, you have Steph playing at like a superstar level. Where that's to be expected. But my thing is, end of the season, right? Say that they're playing better. Say they rattle off some wins. Say they obviously, I feel like they're going to be in the plan. I don't think they'll make enough of a run to solidify, you know, a playoff spot. But they're definitely a team that I can see that can solidify a playoff spot by winning their playing games. And then come playoff time, round one is kind of like what happened last year, where it's like you have a super young, up and coming team and those like top seeds, and they're playing a obviously older but more experienced you know has a superstar level warriors team and that could be scary for like a round one matchup you know what i'm saying i'm not i'm not saying i obviously we don't know who they're matched up with and i'm not guaranteeing you know they'll beat that young team but for a team that gets to the one the two seed and then your reward is stephen curry and the warriors who's playing better is that's great like bro that's crazy to me like that's wild So I just think that that's a team to kind of be on the lookout for because if they continue playing at this level, they can make it t- at least tough if they sneak into the playoffs and play one of these top two seeds. Yeah, no, that's that's a sucky prize to get <laughs> if you're <laughs> right. the first or second seed because um, there's there's no team that has as much playoff experience. Forget playoff. There's no team that has as much championship experience. Right. That's on that roster in Golden State right now. Um, and like you said, they're they're eight and two in their last 10 games. Um, and a lot of that, to your point, has to do with the insertion of Jonathan Kaminga into the starting lineup. Um, he's just he's unlocked so much for this offense mm-hmm. um, between him and AirPods, uh, just doing so much on the court for them. Clay, obviously, in the first game that he was on the bench, probably has the best game of the year, dropped 35. Um, he struggled a bit last night. But even when he's there with the second unit, you see him making great feeds to to Trace Jackson Davis off the bench, who had a great mm-hmm. game last night. Um, he's played, he's had a great season for them so far in his, his limited role that he's played for them. Um, they're a little banged up right now. Um, they're going to get healthier. Obviously, Chris Paul should be coming back somewhat soon. Um, same thing with Gary Payton too. I think he's just dealing with a little bit of an illness. So those are going to be two, um, two key role guys to come in for them. Like for as much slack as I've given Steve Kerr as a coach for his lineup decisions, I look, I'm always going to play it fair. I tip my cap. This is a very good move. It's netting out good results. Um, and I, it really could put them in a position where, there's multiple times this year I think I set up here confidently. I don't think this is going to be a playoff team. It's still not a guarantee for them. Like right. as tempting. crazy as right, as crazy as the West is right now, like it'll be a hard challenge for them to get out of the play in. And it's right. not secure that they're even going to be in there. Like the Jazz aren't crazy far off. And I don't think that the Jazz or the Rockets are going to be able to leapfrog them, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Right. But if they get in, to your point, Steph, in a seven-game series, you got to respect it to some extent. doesn't mean he's going to be a favorite. doesn't mean that they're going to win, but it's not going to be an easy game for – or easy series for a, a one or a two seed out west, um, especially not if they're playing like they are now, fast-paced, um, getting up, running the floor. Um, there's a ton of just – cuts last night where guys are just hitting people in motion the offense just feels like it's like a like there's been a shock to the system uh like they somebody put a battery in their back um and it's not the warriors team that we're used to seeing but it's one that's working right now so so shout out to them they definitely got something cooking over there in the bay yeah, hundred percent, man. Especially like I said, especially if they run into these inexperienced younger teams, like like the Thunder. Like you just you just don't know. You just never know what could really happen. Especially if you got Steph Curry on the other side of the ball. Team that I want to talk about in the the opposite direction, right? So we've been talking about teams that we think are are definitely going to climb the standings here post All Star break. I am still out on the Bucks, bro. Okay. okay. Like, 
I I get it. And we learned very quickly earlier in the year because James Harden got traded to the Clippers and it looked awful after like four or five games. We see what that's turned out to. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was trying to reserve, you know, my, my thoughts about their record and how it's been since Doc got there. But three and seven in their last 10, I think Doc has been the coach in all of those games. Um, the defense is still questionable. And I've seen a lot of people talk about it, whether it's a combination of – or not even a combination. Is it a personnel thing or is it a coaching thing? Um, and I, I think it's a mix of both. But more strongly, at least in the Bucks case, a personnel issue, they're literally just lacking point of attack guys, um, which is critical for how the game is being played. Um, and more telling than anything, like their last game before the All-Star break um, was a three-point loss to a Grizzlies team where the starting lineup for the Memphis Grizzlies was Vince Williams. Uh, this is Jordan Goodwin, Santi Aldama, Zaire Williams, and Trey Jemison. A Bucks team with Giannis. And Damian Lillard and Brooke Lopez, and Chris, they have absolutely zero business losing to that team, especially knowing that is your last game before the All-Star break. Absolutely no business losing that game. And Doc went on the press conference after and was like, ah, I think some guys' minds are already in Cancun or Cabo, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. I don't care, bro. Not to, now, I don't want to just nitpick at this game, but – there's not, there hasn't been this crazy change that I feel like the Bucks were probably hoping they were going to see by firing Adrian Griffin and bringing in Doc. Those issues are still there, bro. And the only change that they made the deadline was bringing in, bringing in Patrick Beverly. <clears throat> and again, I think he's a guy who can give you quality minutes for his limited role. Like he's going to be a pest. He's going to be a, a scrappy defender. Like you need guys like that if you're going to make a deep playoff run. But there's still a lot of issues with their defense. Um, very quietly, Dame was in a wild slump, like a wild shooting slump. And he's this whole season for him has been very, very up and down. He's hot and he's cold. Like he had a period where he was, I think it was uh, in December, um, he was super hot. Shooting percentages were up, three point percentages was up. And then January was very, very cold for him. He's been kind of all over the place consistent wise, consistency wise this season. Chris Middleton has been dealing with, you know, the injuries. I don't even know what you can really expect out of him at this point. Like we've gotten so far into the season. It's hard to say that you can really rely on him come playoff time, um, which is unfortunate being a guy who was so critical in their, you know, their finals run in 2021. But I just I do not have a good feeling about this Bucks team. I don't have a good feeling about their defense. It feels like at times their offense is it leaves a lot to be desired too. Again, like I just mentioned with with Dame's you know shooting slump, like there's just too many question marks for a roster that's this good. And the change that they made in the coaching position has, at least to this point, not netted out and really rectifying much of that. Right. No, I, I agree. Honestly, I agree. The biggest thing for me is really the fact that, you know, the you changing coaches was not going to change you guys' problem, like you said. Like, that's – you guys still have the same defensive issues. And then, like you said, the game, the offensive struggles. Like, it's it doesn't look good. And I believe pretty much everybody, but we definitely talked about it. Even when they fired Adrian Griffin, we were like – and brought in Doc Rivers. It was like, all right, you guys aren't now just going to flip a switch and become – instant you know the bucks team we thought we were going to get coming into the season to where like you know your defensive deficiencies aren't that bad you can make up for it. like you know you guys still have that same problem and hey, like i don't really see a way it gets better because switching coaches mid-season is tough in itself but then you got all these problems and you know you're not that you can't bring in guys that's going to help solve those problems like the trade deadline already passed it's just it's really a tough situation. Like, it really is. Um, the only honestly, the only way you guys can really get out of it and become that Bucks team that you know we thought we was gonna get coming into the season is if your two superstars just go nuclear, which is definitely possible. You know, Dame and Giannis are both capable of just 
saying, you know what, we got Dame, we got Giannis in a seven game series. We're just going to go off and we're going to win that way. It's definitely possible. Is it probable? I'm not too sure, especially the way Dame has been playing this season. Um, and then I don't trust Doug Rivers in the playoff anyway. So it is definitely a team to watch on the down slope as far as, you know, the second half of the season and then coming to the playoffs. But it's going to be interesting. It's definitely going to be interesting um, to see what they do as far as, you know, trying to solve their problems. But like I said, I, I kind of agree with you. I don't really see a way it kind of it gets fixed. Like, I think this might just be this year's Bucks team. Yeah, they I, I just pulled it up. They are. They've climbed in throughout the full season from when they fired Adrian Griffin. I think they were 22nd or 23rd in defensive rating. They're now up to 15th. I think since they fired him, they've technically had the sixth or fifth highest defensive rating. Um, so, like, stat-wise, there is improvement. Like, I guess that should give some glimmer of hope. But they also – had the easiest strength of schedule at the time when they fired Adrian Griffin. Like if I pull up the Bucks schedule right now, like what they're about to go into coming out of the all-star break, um, you're looking at, at Minnesota, at Philly, you get two games against Charlotte and then a game against Chicago. Then you go Clippers, Warriors, Lakers, Clippers, Kings, 76ers, Suns, Celtics. You got Thunder, Lakers, Pelicans. Like Jesus Christ crazy stretch of games against all contending or playoff level teams out east or out west like i i it's i i need to see it i am not i'm not a believer in it if they are able to, to turn it on obviously like like i said the defensive rating has been better they've done some things schematically that have have definitely helped out that have have gotten them to that point but it it, it has not at least to this point, resulted in wins for them. And it's only an uphill battle with the, the schedule that they have, you know, moving on. So, like you said, this this might just be the Buck team this year. And if they can't get this sorted out, like, okay, yeah, Doc came in at the middle of the season. That's a little weird, but that's not, it's not acceptable, bro. Yeah. It's not acceptable. You can't ever – when you compile this much talent, when you make the move that they did to go out and get a guy like Damian Lillard, you gotta gotta be making that legit push every single year. And so no no year can be a wash. So Facts. they gotta get that, gotta get that situated. Hundred percent. Uh what about you? You got another team that you're you're looking at either way, going up or down. Um, I mean, honestly, a lot of these teams, I feel like we kind of know what they are to an extent. If I had to pick maybe two teams, it'd probably be the two LA teams, to be honest with you. Because the mm -hmm. Clippers, before the All-Star break, you know, obviously was playing really, really well. They was playing great. Like, there was a lot of people's pick. Like, if you had to pick now, there would be some people's pick to, you know, come out of the West or leave it, at least make it very, very far in the West. So I'd say, as far as team to watch, I really just want to see, obviously, one, can they stay healthy? Can they stay, you know, this cohesive unit? Because, like you said, the first, <laughs> first couple games when James Harden got there, it looked really, really bad. But mm -hmm. I feel they're all kind of bought into, you know, their roles, what they mean to this team. And now they're actually they're playing very, very well. Um, so I a team to watch as far as one, can they stay healthy? Two, is it legit? Can it all stay <laughs> relatively just about basketball when you talk about James Harden? And in the playoffs, can you guys all put it together for the pretty much the first time since we've had the Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, like Clippers era? So I think that's definitely a team to watch. Um, for the second half, but mainly for the playoffs, because to me, what they do in the regular season doesn't matter as much because it's really about, you know, what they do in that playoffs because they're a win now team. Like they're a championship level team. So can they put it all together? And I say the other Lakers team or the other LA team, the Lakers, as far as kind of the same reasons I talked about with the Warriors, you know, like you're really going to have a one, two seed and possibly play LeBron and Anthony Davis, which is <laughs> right, like, yep. which is crazy, which is a crazy prize for get, having the first or second best record in the whole West. So, and before the All Star break, Lakers was playing, you know, relatively better. I'd say um, they had some guys step up. I think Rui's been playing better. D'Lo was on a tear when the trade rumors were out. So, I'd say a team to watch as far as kind of like the Clippers. Are they legit as far as that little? stretch right before the all-star break is that really the lakers team or was it just a little facade because 
I remember when the in season tournament was going on, you were very hot. You were honestly higher than on the Lakers than I was based on the way mm-hmm. they played. And something about it for me was just like, I don't know if this is just for this in season tournament or not. And it turned out like, you know, after that tournament, they weren't playing great. They weren't, they didn't look like a good team at all. So yeah. I really just want to know what, what is the Lakers team this year? Is it the team we see in the in season tournament that locked it on defense? They can lock it down and like pretty much beat anybody. Is the team that for stretches of the season just looked like they couldn't even compete with any of the teams in the West? Or is the team, you know, with their role players stepping up with D'Lo, with Rui, with Austin Reeves, guys play, all playing well and, you know, actually contributing to the to the team? I just want to know which Lakers team it, it's going to be this season. So I'd say, though, that's also my team to watch for the second half of the season. The Lakers, if they want to be successful, have to – they not only have to fully buy into their identity – It'll make sense when I get there. They have to really impose it on other teams because to me and how they won their championship in the bubble, like so much of it was how the Lakers were able to play defensively in that series through Anthony Davis being the anchor of that defense. And if they're able to do that, that unlocks so much on the offensive side of the ball and fast break. They can get out. They can play fast. They're so much more physical than other teams. They're bigger than a lot of teams. They can, like, dominate you in the paint. And if guys like D'Lo are knocking down shots, spacing is great. They're fast. Mm -hmm. It's like – and all that starts with good defense, especially on the the, at the rim. So Mm -hmm. if they can fully solidify that, obviously you probably know better than me. What is the what is the timeline looking like for Vando? It's been a while since we've seen him, you know, dealing with the was it the heel injury he's had. Initially, it was a couple. It was some weeks. Um, let me see. I I believe he's still like a couple weeks out. I got to check for it, but um, but yeah, no, that helps because obviously, when when the Lakers won the championship, it was I I'd say those teams were more like team defense mm-hmm. to whereas like this team is it three, um, it's like three weeks out. So it's, I think he's like, it's still like a couple weeks out. Okay. Um, yeah. but yeah, those teams, like the, the, like the 2020 team was more like team defense led by Anthony Davis. Sometimes mm-hmm. this year when I'm watching it, it, this team is like Anthony Davis, save us. Like that's what yes. it feels like. So it, it, sit sit him in a deep drop and just like don't let anything get to the rim, which is part right. of why Steph got so hot last night. Exactly. So and I think you know getting guys back like Vanderbilt, Cam Reddish, like getting more healthy would definitely help with that. Like it's tough. This season has basically been like an injury riddled season, which is crazy because last year was like LeBron and AD couldn't stay healthy. This year is like they're both fine. All of the role players are just, are just out of the lineup. So yeah. it, it's been tough. But I, I feel like, you know, guys getting healthier and getting that team defense mindset back would definitely go a long way as to what you're saying because we've seen it in the NCAA tournament. Like, they were locked in on defense. So, mm-hmm. like I said, I just want to know which Lakers team I'm going to get. That's all I want to know. Are y'all legit? Are we packing it in? Like, what, what are we doing here? Now's the time you're going to find out, bro. Not too many games left in the season. Um, the last team that I want to touch on, and I'll be brief because we, we kind of talked about them a little bit earlier, um, is the Pelicans. And a lot of what um, J.J. Redick talked about rings very true for this roster. goes back to probably after the end season tournament when we talked about the Pelicans. Consistency was, I think, the biggest thing that we talked about, especially for Zion, like, can we get him in a consistent role, knowing what we're going to get from him night in, night out? Um, in last 10 games, they're sitting at, I think, 8-2 and two as well. They're on, a, I think, a four-game win streak, too. Um, one last night pretty big over the Rockets. Zion had 27 and 9 assists in that game. Um, in his last 10, Zion is averaging – um, 25, basically 25, five and six with a block and a steal, um, on 57% from the field. Again, he's doing more of that point Zion type stuff where he, he's kind of the, the primary ball handler in the offense. Um, and like I said, that opens up so much for their offense when you're running lineups like him on the ball, you're putting guys like Herb Jones in that the action and you've got. Trey Murphy spotting up, CJ spotting up, 
Uh, Valanciunas can spot up. Like, there's a lot of shooters on this roster. Um, I would space the floor for you um, and allow Zion to do what he does best and get downhill two feet in the paint and then make a decision from there whether he's going up at the rim, take a high percentage shot, um, or kick out to open shooter. So, again, seems like that had been the formula when Zion was it last year was early on looking like he was like an MVP candidate. This right. is what they were doing. They were putting the ball in his hands. They were letting him kind of be the, the main ball handler, ball handler initiator for the offense. Um, and the Pelicans were looking dangerous. And with Zion is playing like this, that is when I feel like when B.I. can come in, the two of them can play so perfectly off of one another where you've got another guy who can come in and get his own bucket, but he also can be effective off the ball as a spot-up guy, as a catch-and-shoot guy. They can run actions for him. Um, and again, vice versa, he can initiate for himself. He can create for himself at a very, very high level. And because of how much time Zion had missed the last couple of years, Brandon Ingram has grown a lot as a playmaker as well. So like Thanks. the offense can be so fluid with the two of them. Um, so I, I, I think we said it earlier in the year, but I, we're hopeful that this is the year that all the pieces finally come together and stay together for the Pelicans. And, and it's looking like they're trending in the right direction. They've, they've got Zion back in the position that I think he's best suited for um, in this offense um, and, and everything is clicking for them. So I think right now, as it sits, they are the four five seed um, out West. That's bro. They could push up four. like, obviously it's going to be tough trying to get over like the nuggets or the Clippers, but it's not mm. impossible with the way that they've been playing. Um, so they are, they're definitely another team to, to watch out for down the stretch here. hundred percent. They're scary. They're definitely scary. I feel like I got to watch a little bit more Pelicans games. I really do. I'm gonna make a point of that. This the second half of the season. But like I said, that was that was the formula last year. That was the formula when they were playing well and looked like one of those, you know, really good teams in the West. So going back to that is really great because that just it plays to your player's strengths. Like you got to do that if you want to end up winning games. So I'm curious to see if, like I said, can they put it all together this second half of the season and can they actually, you know, be a threat in the West? So it's going to be interesting. Definitely going to be interesting. For sure. Um, and also just feels like a good time to – Go through some of the odds for all of the end of season awards and just take a quick snapshot because I know we did it at the beginning of the season and probably a month or two in. Like, just take a snapshot on what we're feeling, what, what our gut is leaning us towards for all the end of season awards. Um, we'll start with uh, we do coach of the year, and I personally probably would lean towards. It's so many deserving guys. Coach of the year sometimes is always one of the hardest ones to give out. Cause like just low key, you know, I feel like it could be a good coach of the year candidate, even though his team is that high in the standings. Ooh. Bro, Taylor, Taylor Jenkins with the Grizzlies. This team got <laughs> no business has you no said, business. You said that high in the standings. Years. You mean low as hell in the standings. Oh, yeah, low in the standings. <laughs> my bad. Um, no, I'm just saying but, this is funny. But yeah, yeah you're right. Go this, ahead. This team has no business playing the way they are night in night out being scrappy um and sitting at 20 wins on the season like yeah he's not going to win the award because obviously it's, it's always going to go to a coach with one of the best records in either of the conferences but he's doing a phenomenal job with the limited resources that he has realistically um probably think it will go to Mark Dagonal out in OKC just with the, the work that that team has done, the leap that they've made this year. Um, I think it, it obviously and for a lot of guys, it would be well-deserved. It would definitely be well-deserved for him. 100%. I agree. It's it's, it's probably going to go to him um, just because they all they normally give it to a team that's – or just this is how the culture you normally just works as far as across sports in general. It's really like the team that last year was – they could be in eh, or like was bad and now they're, you know, a top team. So it makes sense. I remember I think mm -hmm. my – my pick when we talked about, I think it was Joe Mazzula. Yeah. The Celtics were playing so good, which, yeah. But I, like I said, I just think the story is a little bit better with OKC. Agreed. And I think, like, the jump that they've made year over year is right. probably a big contributor. Mm -hmm. uh, next one is six man of the year. Um, 
The odds on favorite right now is Malik Monk. That is also going to be my that's also going to be my pick. Love watching Malik Monk play basketball, bro. He bro. him he more than anybody else on this list. The, Tim Hardaway Jr. also is a guy that can do this. But it feels like, bro, if Malik Monk when he gets going, he, he takes over for a solid like 4 to 5 minutes, bro. Facts. Just take the game over from like completely bro um it, which is i mean that's all you could more than all you could ask for out of your your six man to just come in um and be a guy who can like carry the load offensively um and fully just take over a game so he, he would be my pick for six man tim hardaway obviously is also a phenomenal choice because i think you tweeted it last night he ain't never seen a shot he don't like he's he'd be sparking him he bro, definitely he, sparks him bro it, it'd be like Tim Hardaway Jr., Eric Gordon. Ah, there was one more. I forgot who it was. Oh, Norman Powell. Mm -hmm. I swear to you, bro, if you didn't know, if you just watched basketball and you you didn't know who they were, you'd be like, oh, those are the best players on the team because they shoot everything. They got the (laughs) green light. But Norman Norman Powell could be playing with Bron, KD, Steph, Jokic. He's going to shoot like he's the best player on the court, which is hilarious. But, you know, the – He's definitely one of those guys that, you know, off the bench, give you some extra scoring, that that spark plug. But also at times, like I said, feels like more than just that, um, right. which is which is great. But, yeah, he, he'd he be my pick. I remember when we first did it afterwards, a little bit afterwards, you know, when Austin Reeves was still coming off the bench, I was like, oh, well, he might he might have a chance. Yeah, he and he got moved to the starting line. I was like, ah, yeah. damn. But, you know, for me, it, for me, it's Malik Monk. Yeah. Also, I got to give a shout out here to Nas Reed, bro. Another guy, they call big him jelly. Big, Je- big Jelly. Yep. <laughs> Another guy I love watching play is definitely a deserving six man of the year candidate. Giving up, I think he's doing like twelve and five, um, coming off the bench there in Minnesota. He just is, bro, so versatile as a center. He might mm-hmm. actually have the smoothest handles currently for any center in the NBA. Did you watch his like uh, high school like highlight tape before? I have not. Bro, he w- he is a guard, bro. Okay. He was okay. really he, bro. he's on he's on some Kavon Looney type time. Bro, he was hoping, bro. Like he looked like just big jelly. Like he looked like a okay. huge <laughs> guard, bro. He was hoping. I think it was like his I'm like gonna... AAU mixtape or something like that. He was going crazy. I'm gonna have to check that out. Okay, okay, yeah. But no, he his handles are crazy for his size. His game right. is so smooth and fluid. Um, his scoring punch that he provides off the bench is huge for him. So definitely deserving to be in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, clutch player of the year. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this I just I don't is know. Still Dame? I don't one. know. <laughs> they got the odds on favorite is Steph, Shay's up here, Dame, Luca, Jalen Brunson, LeBron. Whatever. We'll see. <laughs> uh, I most I don't even know. Most improved <laughs> player. My pick at the beginning of the year. I want to say it was probably Shangun. I don't know right now that it can go to anybody other. Well, obviously it can't because he's not the odds on favorite. But in my opinion, it's got to be Kobe White, bro. Mm-hmm. has to be Kobe White, bro. He Facts. is moving different this year, bro. This is a, di- <laughs> this is a different player than Facts. he was last year. Um, yeah. And like his his jumps year to year, get that pulled up. Last year, he's averaging nine points, two point eight assists, two point nine rebounds. This year, he is averaging nineteen point six points, five point two assists, and almost five rebounds. <laughs> A full ten point jump in points per game. You know, he he's definitely. He's definitely a uh, a deserving candidate for sure, hundred percent. I just it's tough because it's really to me it's just only two people that could get the award. I feel like, um, I think, bro. Like I said, I if I had to pick now, I'd probably say Kobe White too. Mm-hmm. But I can definitely see why Ty because Tyree Massey's probably the favorite still, right? He is. Yeah, it's tight. I, it's he's minus two hundred and Kobe is plus three eighty. 
Okay, so yeah, it's still close, but I I can see why you know call, uh, Tyrese Maxey, especially with a crazy start to the season he had, is still you know the odds on favorite. Um, because he says his jump is still crazy. He has what a five point jump. Um, mm-hmm. I believe a three assist jump. Let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to pull everything up here, but honestly, just all around, all across the board, he's been playing very very well. Um, especially now with with Embiid out, he's basically taking on the the load of being the number one guy over there now, but. Like I said, a 10-point jump out of Kobe White is crazy. And honestly, right. not even just stats alone. Like I said, when you just watch the dude play, it's like, bro, who is this? This is not the Kobe White from last year, bro. Not, not the same all. guy, bro. He's moving different this year. And it goes back to – we talked about it a long time ago, going back to how they gave – giving John ja Morant the award was just weird because it's like, he yeah he improved a lot but it's like he was supposed to like that's the trajectory his career was going on right not to I've, look being clear not to say Tyrese Maxey was on that same superstar type of trajectory but it's like we've seen that improvement well like I just said Kobe White the year before I just told him he's averaging nine he was averaging like 13 14 so it's like we literally saw a guy go from here to here to here like that is that's crazy right. improvement to me um and it like like you said, he's just he's moving differently on the court. He looks like a completely different player. He's so much more aggressive on the offensive side of the ball. The Bulls need to start giving him the ball in the clutch. I'm tired of seeing DeMar DeRozan hero mm-hmm. ball right. in the fourth <laughs> quarter when Kobe White has like 30 plus points. Like, I get it, it's DeMar, but if Kobe is hot, which he is on most nights for this Bulls team right now, he needs the rock in his hands. 100%. Um, so that, that would be my pick for most improved player. Depoy, the Depoy race is interesting. Obviously, Rudy is still the that super odds on favorite at minus 750. Can you guess who number two is? All right. <laughs> is it a big man or a guard? It's a big. Mumiyama. He's number three. Who's number two? Bam? Jared Allen. Cavs Jared defense. Allen. Cavs defense was TA Titan. Up on that little was like 14 15 game streak that they went on, and yeah, and they were winning, so yeah, right. Okay. With, with no Mobley, Jared Allen is having a very, very quiet, quietly underrated season this year. Okay, um, because and I think a lot of it does have to do with just his perception as being like a old school in the paint big, but mm-hmm. um, he does a lot for this team. I think he's averaging almost 16 points, he had 10 rebounds. Um, a block of steal, low key three assists, two a night. Like, does okay. a lot for this Cavs team. Um, and especially on that run that they went on without DG or Evan Mobley. So, um, he, he's second, fourth is Derek White, fifth is Chet Holmgren, and then you got AD, Bam, Kristaps, Giannis. Whoa, um, whoa, 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 whoa. What are we talking about? What? Who's <laughs> over AD? What? What are we talking about here? Chet, on, Chet and Derek White, both ahead of Anthony Davis. Come on, man. What are we talking about here, bro? It's just, it's just bad, bro. It's just bad. It's just bad. <laughs> what are we talking about? There's, there's no way you're telling me Derek White is a, a better depoy candidate than Anthony Davis. We got to – listen, I get it. You know, it's cool. You know, help, you help, your defense help your team win a lot of games. I, I completely understand that. The responsibility that Anthony Davis has, like I said, backpacking the Lakers defense, Mm-hmm. Is way more than Derek White on the Celtics. We yep. got come on, we got to be for real here. Like this, this, uh, this the Bam out of bio argument right here. Like come on, man. Chet's, Chet's raw counting stats numbers. He probably he might have more blocks than AD. I get it, but bro, he's carrying our defense. Like he is right. without Anthony Davis. When they we're cooked on defense, like we're done. Yeah. So. Yeah, Chet Chet consistently that. has better defenders around him. Like Shea, I think exactly. leads the league in steals. Obviously, they got Lou Dor out on the perimeter too. Mm-hmm. Um, just like it's Chet, obviously is the anchor, right? Especially at the rim there. But like you said, AD is backpacking more of that defensive load. The Bam backpacks the defensive load for the Heat year in year out, and sometimes mm-hmm. he can't even make an all defensive team. For it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You got to take some context into it, man. What is that? That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Wemby being third, I wasn't expecting him to be that high odds wise, but like, bro, can we talk about the fact it, he's going to get the five by five this year, right? He's got to. He was one assist, he off, was wasn't he? One assist shy last night. 
Um, he got a triple double with blocks already this year. He is really, bro. He's he's a my player. He's putting up my player stats, bro. Bro, he's doing this in his rookie year on like twenty what twenty eight minutes a game. Twenty eight minutes a game. He's averaging twenty point five points, ten rebounds, three assists, three point two blocks, and one point two steals, bro. But when we made the video a long time ago, I was like, would you rather have Wimby? Or would you rather have who an insert all star right. here? Yeah, give me the guy. Give me the you see. Give me the nineteen year old who's who's averaging like six blocks per thirty six, bro. Oh my god, are we we end up being right? What is y'all just gotta hear us out, bro? We always be end up being right, man. Come on, but, but you know crazy. what the problem is, bro? What what has one be done in the playoffs? See, that was the <laughs> issue, bro. That was the issue. How many we, how many rings would be yeah. got? He ain't got no rings. What are we talking about? He can't even be a good known as a good player if you didn't win six rings by now. What are you talking about, bro? What <laughs> that is the perfect example, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's crazy, bro. I will say, do you think uh, do you think Depoy? Because obviously the Spurs suck, but like, right. do you think um to be like a guy who wins Defensive Player of the Year? Does your team overall have to like? Does your defense have to like lead to wins in a sense, or at least like a good overall team defense, or is it just I'm a a fantastic defender? I think, and this is how I view it. I don't think this is how the the mass amount of people do like you said then you should talk about the nuance right the amount of load that you have to carry that's why year in year out i try to give as much praise to bam because he does so much defensively for the miami heat he i don't i don't know if he really ever averages more than two blocks a game like just you just looked at blocks and steals which is not the best indicator of how good of a defender you are but mm-hmm. just looking at that like, he's never going to floor you with those numbers. But if you watch the Miami Heat play, you see how much he switches on the guards. You see how much he communicates, how much he commands, um, you know, from the back line of their defense, as well as being able to play. So, you know, many different schemes I've seen the Heat play just this year. They're probably one of the teams that utilizes zone defense the most in the mm-hmm. NBA. Like, he's able to do so much because of how versatile he is. So, viewing it from that perspective, I think Wemby being here is fair because it's like, bro, I don't care that their team as a whole is bad. I don't care if their team defense is bad. They don't have, like, individually, they don't have a lot of other good defenders on that roster outside of him anyway. It's not going to matter. By himself, bro, he had a 10-block game. He's averaging 3.2 blocks in 28 minutes. If he was playing 36 minutes a night, he'd be averaging, like, four and a half blocks. That's a, like statistical anomaly, bro. I think the most blocks. Let me see what Mark Eaton's career high is. I know it's him. Um, I think he Mark Eaton had a season where he averaged like five point two blocks or something crazy like that. Five point six. I, I feel like Wimby could do something crazy like that, bro. Uh, yeah, once he starts, once he gets off a minute restriction, absolutely. Right. And if he and to me, if he put even if he got up to like four to five blocks, that to me is more impressive because of the the era that it's in now. Like Mark Eaton is doing that at a time where it's like right, yeah, guys are going to the paint, bigs are mm-hmm. trying to take it up on him. He's playing out of the post. Like Wemby is doing this, switching off, rotating from the weak side. Obviously, he's genetically gifted, bro. Has like a 10 foot 10 wingspan, mm-hmm. but he can legitimately erase so much at the rim. He can make up for so many defensive miscues just by himself. All for the strength of that, I think it's fair enough for him to be not just in this deep point conversation. He genuinely might be the second team center on the all defensive team this year, which is crazy because then Bam would get left off again. But <laughs> like, the hype alone could will probably get him that. Right, right. It, he, not saying not deserving, but like the hype alone will help and propel him to get to that along with his play. Right, right. So to go back to your original point, I do feel like you have to take all of it in. Like, if you have a great team defense and you're the like the primary anchor of that, like so much con- you are contributing so much to that. Like, yeah, that needs to be factored in. But at the same time, if your team defense is bad, but you individually are like a ball stopper, anchored like rim protector. 
Like that should be taken into account too. You can't, it's not one V five or it's not one on one. It's a five V five sport. Right. You can't defend everything, but if you are going above and beyond your individual position, you should be, you should be recognized for it. Yeah, I agree. I was just curious. I wanted to get your take on it. Yeah. Like I said, because I oh you also said because I don't know if they like people who vote view it in the, that aspect or you're you, know, you got the best defensive team and you're playing great. So people, yeah, I don't think it's ever at least not in recent history going to a, a guy who's been on a even a average or mediocre <clears throat> defense. It's always been like one of the top defenses in the NBA. Okay, who's the best defender on that team? Kind of like that's how Rudy got to that point. And again, well deserving. Again, if you watch it, could add the context to it. He is anchoring their defense. Um, but that's how that, especially early in the year, that's how they even start that candidacy up. So that's how most awards are. That's how every made the major ones, like MVP, best player, best record, most of the time, in mm-hmm. most cases. So that's how it always is. Rookie of the year, I I'm I'm sold. Swimby. I'm done. Swimby. It's, Swimby. Swimby. It's, it's over. <laughs> it's so over. I was on chat. I think when we first talked about it, I think I was on yep. chat. I'm <laughs> so switched. It, chat, chat looked great. Thunder are winning like crazy. Like I said, I, I'm not using it to take down Wimby. I'm using it to boost up chat. I don't care no more. Do you yeah, know what I'm no. saying? <laughs> man, Wemby, bro. Night in, night out. I'm like, like, it's crazy. He's doing ridiculous stuff for his size, bro. Facts. He's the rookie of the year. Facts, man. Yeah, I, I'm. I completely switched. I'm all Wimby now. Mm-hmm. He's, there's no way he's gonna. You know, it, it's Wimby. It's no way he's yeah. gonna lose it. Last one, arguably the most, the hardest one to pick. Most valuable player right uh, now today, February twenty third, twenty twenty four. Who is your MVP? Right now, who I think it will be. Do both. Who you think it is right now and who you think it's going to be. Right now, if I had to pick an MVP, I would lean Jokic. And I feel like that's the easiest answer. That's the safest answer. Because obviously you can pick Shea, you can pick Luka. Mm -hmm. But who who I think it will be. I think it will be Luca. I think he'll end up winning MVP because I think the Mavs will go on a run to the end of the season to where they're like, you know, they'll have a, I mean, they already have a, a solid record, but I think they'll move up in the standings. I think they'll win a lot of games. And then obviously Luca, Luca has MVP numbers ever since he stepped into the league. It's not about, you know, his numbers. Like he's going to have those type of numbers. Right. But it's about, you know, the team overall record and how the team is doing. I think he now has a good enough team to where they would, at least in the regular season, they would go on a run. They would have a good enough record to where, honestly, I feel like voter fatigue will set in with, with Jokic. Like, right now, I feel like it's Jokic by default, even though he's what well, more than deserving, like, numbers-wise, record-wise, everything. Right. But, like, I feel like if the Mavs go on a run, that voter fatigue will kick in, and then Luka will jump up in the MVP race, and he'll end up getting it. Um, and, yeah, so I, I think it will be Luka. When I'm looking at the odds right now, realistically – and not in my mind, people who I think when I think about their season, I'm like, yeah, that's an MVP level season. I see one, two, three, four, five, maybe six and seven players. Name like D. Uh, Jokic, Shea, Luka, Giannis, Tatum, and then outskirt E wise, Kawhi, Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell actually should get more praise in that in MVP uh, talks. Bro, the simple fact that we sat up here after Darius Garland broke his face and Evan Mobley got hurt and they both was about to be out for two months, I sat up here and said, yo, y'all really should consider, like, trade him. Like, he, he might not want to stay in Cleveland. This season might be a wash. At least get something back. Build around DG and Evan Mobley. He said, fuck all that. And yeah. then won 15 out of or 14 out of 15 games <laughs> and got them jumped up to the two seed at one point. They're the two seed now. Yeah, they're already right. I'm gonna say they still are the two seed. Like, bro, and that's like during that stretch, that is all like obviously again. We, we just, I did just a little bit talk about how Jared Allen has having an underrated season. He's a big contributor to that. 
But so much of that is on the back of what Donovan Mitchell has done this season for this Cavs team. 100%. Not getting crazy talked about because, like I just said, there is Jokic and Shea and Luka and Giannis and Tatum. And, like, bro, all these guys are having MVP-level seasons. And, but only one of them can get the award. It's a yeah. tight race. Like, when it's all said and done, I feel like this is going to come down to be one of the – Tightest MVP races we've ever seen. Yeah, because it could, um, bro, it could flip so easily. Mm-hmm. Right now, today, if I had to pick, and I tussle back and forth all the time, I think I would probably go Luca. But him and Shea are like here, like it is neck and neck. Um, well, I ultimately, I, 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 I like your reasoning with Luca for the same reasons. Like, I think they're gonna go on the run. He's going to be putting up crazy stat lines. He's already put up crazy stat lines, 73 points. <laughs> like, it, it feels like the the narrative for him could just into high gear. Mm-hmm. And uh, he ends up with the award. But, again, all these guys are crazy deserving. I think Tatum even went out and was talking about he doesn't really understand why, you know, he's not higher up in the, the standings for the award and, like, Let's be honest. I think he's right. Like, we, you just talked about how often MVP goes to the best guy on the best team with the best record. Like, they are clearing every other team in the NBA in record right now. Like, mm-hmm. no one else has 40 wins. They're sitting at 44. He uh, he talked about recent, I think I just seen a tweet right before the podcast. He talked about how um, he thinks that the voters will understand his team dynamic, which is like, like he even admitted, like, obviously, I'm only – it's crazy to say only averaging like 27 points a game. Obviously, in comp- yeah, only, you're right. All right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but compared to the other guys, you know, it's not 31, 32. It's not nothing crazy like yeah. that. But he's like, obviously, the team dynamic. It doesn't need for me he's, to be this. He's on a significantly better roster. Exactly. He doesn't. I don't need to be this 30 point per game scorer and right. take all the shots every single night. So he said, he say he feels like the voters will like kind of. You know, give him that credit. I feel like they will not at all. <laughs> I feel like they will oh, do no, not. He's, that. I don't really see a way where he wins the award. I think he's 100% having an MVP type season, but mm-hmm. it's just no, there's no way come the end of this year, barring knock on wood, any type of crazy amounts of injuries, but like you're going to, they're going to give it to him over Jokic or Luka or Shea. And like even, bro, same thing. You know, I, don't even, I haven't even seen a ton. For Giannis as an MVP this year, I honestly, so like, I feel like they just the narrative around the Bucks has been so bad. Even though they have, like, they're not a bad team, the narrative is just like downhill to where like Giannis, yeah. and also Giannis is another guy voter fatigue where it's like you got two, we got two uh, two MVPs, I believe, right? Giannis, yeah, but this bugging? might, nah, I think he does. This yeah. is like arguably his best statistical season. Ever, bro. Better than any of his MVP seasons. Definitely. But even better than last year. Like, he's putting up 31 a night. Um, he's putting up basically the same more amount of rebounds and points steals. as last year's, right? More blocks, more steals, more assists. Um, like significantly better Our efficiency. Field. Like yeah. <laughs> from just a pure stats perspective, he might have to be having the best statistical season of his career. He's not even top three in MVP voting right now. It's crazy. This the race is going to be. I, I'm just fascinated to see what it ends up shaking out to. And like, it's gonna be tough because like, nobody they're giving to. I'm gonna be like, ah, oh, man, he was robbed. You know, mm-hmm. like everybody is is deserving. So it's. But you it's know gonna that's what's gonna be crazy. though. You know they're gonna be the Shay should have won it. How Jokic ain't. It's it's gonna be that, which is yeah. annoying. But yeah, it's it's I. It's just a problem because the criteria changes all the time. Because, like you said, Tatum could definitely win it if it was just like, everyone talks about all the time. Best player, best record. He could have, he could have, she, she should have a really good case, but it's not always yeah. how it is. Yeah, that is every single NBA award. So log that, keep that. We'll come back to that. Come like, uh, what was it like another month and some change from now when it's actually time to, to give our end of season award picks? Um, Last thing we're going to do here, I don't think we've actually done this before, redrafting a draft class. 
Um, I was looking through some of the, the older ones, trying to figure out which one I, I wanted to do. I didn't want to do one that was super recent. I wanted guys to have had some years to come in and establish themselves as players. Uh, and the 2021 class is deep. And I want to go through and redraft it because – very, very interesting how I think this would shake out if this draft happened today, knowing what we know now. Um, so I'm going to ask you, how do you want to do it? Do you want to do like back and forth picks? You just want to like go and say who we would take in this that situation? We can do back and forth. Uh, and so, we're doing just the play, not like fit, like not like. No, not okay. not worrying about fit at all. Take, take fit out of it. I don't care who's on the clock, whatever. Just. Strictly like best player available. Who are you taking? Okay, but right. so let's do a redraft of the 2021 NBA draft. I'm gonna give you the first pick. Are you sticking with Cade or are you going somewhere else? I'm sticking with Cade, man. I'm sticking with Cade. I feel like the discourse around Cade is it's not fair. The team around him has not been suited to best fit his skill set. I feel like he still has crazy upside. I still like he he shows great flashes even on this terrible team. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I thought Kate was playing well when they were breaking a record for the losses. <laughs> like I still thought yeah. he was playing well. So yeah, I'm sticking with Kate. Definitely, definitely. I think that's the right choice. Um, second pick is where I am veering away from history. Um, I'm gonna take Evan Mobley. I'm gonna take Evan Mobley here. Um, okay. The defensive versatility is just. It's, it's too much to pass up on. The offense has started to come around a little bit more uh, since he's come back from injuries, look good as of late. Uh, so I'm, I'm taking Evan Mobley there. I'm still super, super high on what his his final ceiling could be as a, a player. Absolutely, absolutely. Pick number three, I am going to pick Scotty Barnes. Um, I feel like Scotty – like people were getting on him because from from here one a year or two they're like he made no improvements no joke right <laughs> we see we've seen the improvements this year obviously making his first all star team he's been playing really well uh, obviously the defense is there and they're actually well I was about to talk about his team team doesn't really matter right now but just I feel mm-hmm. like this is the point where I can pick Scotty here I think he still has even a higher ceiling I think he can get even better so I'm picking Scotty okay so I, we're was that three picks deep now mm-hmm. fourth pick. I'm going to be taking Franz Wagner. Okay. He's out here. He's just such a complete player. 21 points, uh, six rebounds, four assists. Can't really slow him down. He can handle the ball. He can play off the ball. He can play defense. Um, you know, he he just – it's really crazy to think back on that draft and see that he slid all the way to eight. Um, like the magic really got a steal in the, the middle of the lottery and he pairs so well with what they're doing there um, with Paolo. So I think Franz has to be, be up here. I can't pass him up any further. Got you. Got you. Great pick. Great pick. Great pick. Pick number five. I'm going to go Alperin Shangun. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I think that obviously we've seen when the offense run through Shangun, they play best. Obviously we've seen a jump in his, in his stats. I believe he went from what is it, 14 points per game to 21. Now um, Rockets aren't like the best team in the world, but they're playing a little bit better. He was a person that possibly could have been on an all-star team this year. So mm-hmm. I think he's playing well. And I still think he has even more room to grow as with a lot of these players. So I'm excited for what his ceiling could be. Obviously, you know, baby Jokic, can he be, you know, can he be right. Jokic's brother now? Can he, you know, step up a little bit? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to go Alperin Shane going there. And now is where I think it really gets interesting. <laughs> now the draft. Now we've been taking it right now. We've taken a little <laughs> bit of a, a drop off here. Um, with my next pick. This is oh, this is interesting. This is fun. Hold on. This is mad fun. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, it's some it's some options here. There is some options here. Let me just double check and make sure I'm not missing anybody in the second round. <laughs> um, okay. For my next pick, it might have to be. Is it Kaminga? Yes, he's up there. It's, it's possible. It might just be Kaminga. Er, hmm. it's, I'm torn between him and Trey Murphy. That, yeah. I'm, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna take Kaminga, especially how he's been playing as of late. Finally, Steve Kerr done unleashed him from his bench role. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm going to take Kaminga there. The, the talent, um, the upside, the athleticism, is he has so much. And he's, I, again, I feel like we're just now starting to finally really scratch the surface there mm-hmm. um, with, with him in this Golden State rotation. So I think it's only up for him. 100%. It's a good pick. Honestly, I'm going to pick Trey Murphy because I it, was, it really was between them two. I'm going to pick Trey Murphy. Side note, I think Trey Murphy has one of the prettiest jump shots in the league, bro. He that does. junk is beautiful. Like, I, it's money every time I, I watch him play. So, I'm going to pick Trey Murphy here. I think he has good upside. And I think this is – I think this is a good pick. I think it's a good pick right here. I'm probably about to shock you here. My next pick, bro. Give me Cam Thomas. Oh, you did shot me. Okay. okay. Give me Cam Thomas, bro. Okay. I've seen far... I'm not mad at it either. I'm nah, not mad at it. I've seen far too many flashes out of Cam Thomas. He can't slide no further in his draft right now, bro. I respect it. Like a guy who has put up multiple 40 point games. He's and he's been a bucket at every single level. He put up 25 a night at LSU. Got to the Nets team with KD, with Kyrie, with James Harden, still giving out buckets. They leave. He's still giving out buckets now with Mikel. He is a professional scorer, bro. Give me Cam Thomas. Bad, bad. I, I like it. I like it. What what pick are we on? What, what number is that? Because I have um, not been keeping track at all. <laughs> I low-key have not either. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, got, I got you right. We're going Cade, Mobley. All right. It was... Scotty, Scotty, it was Sh- Franz, Franz, Shangun, yeah, Kaminga, Kaminga. Then you I went Trey Kaminga Murphy, was, uh, and then that Murphy. just went um, Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas. Okay, so this is pick nine here. Okay, okay. All right, I, I think here. I gotta go. I gotta go. Herb Jones. I got Herb go. Jones. Another guy. I was I was waiting to see where he was gonna go. I gotta go. Herb yeah. Jones. I love the defense. I just think out of all these other names here, just who I would rather have on my team. Mm-hmm. Give me yeah. Give me Herb Jones. Give me Herb Jones. Okay. Okay. Um. Hmm. This is so pick that, ten here. That's pick ten. There's a guy who has not been picked yet, still. No, I know. And that, he, that, this is crazy, but like, this is the first pick. Like, I'm I'm starting to consider him. And really, part of why I picked Cam Thomas is like, when I think about Jalen Green and Cam Thomas, the same type of archetype of player right now, I would probably pretty clearly rather have Cam Thomas. Like, it's not much of a discussion in my head mm-hmm. right now. And obviously, they're in different situations. Like, it's not the easiest to gauge. But right now, as of today, February 2024, I would rather have Cam Thomas and Jalen Green. It's not mean I'm out on Jalen Green entirely. I just – I've talked about it before. I think there's a lot that he needs to mold about his game and his shot selection. Um, I'm thinking about taking him here. And I'm also torn between another guy who – He's having a breakout year this year. If he didn't get hurt, he probably would be the front runner for most improved player. And Jalen Johnson. Mm, he was in there. He was definitely up there. Yeah. I uh damn it. Is that disrespectful? Am I tweaking out too much if I took Jalen Johnson here? I'm actually a really big Jalen Johnson fan. I like his game a lot. He yeah, he's bro. Can do a lot on the floor. Like he's it's crazy, but he's at least the last couple of years of John Collins, he's just like better John Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> the way that he fits into the Hawks roster. Uh can shoot athletic rebound. Man, I just convinced myself. Give me, give me Jalen Johnson here. Uh yo, yeah, he would yo, bro. His he went from five points a game to 15. Jesus Christ. Another crazy jump. jump. Wild, bro. Wild. Um, okay, so you went who you go again? Oh, Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson. I'm going Austin Reeves. Oh, he didn't gonna... even get drafted. I th- we can't we can't go AR. We can't go AR. I was That's just fair. like That's fair. Okay. I I tell you what, I tell you what, I won't do it because he didn't get drafted. I won't do it. I won't do it. 
But just know if if he got drafted, that's where he. That's where he would slide in. Okay. That's where he'd slide in for me. But I feel like now it's low key getting disrespectful. No, <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I feel like that's fair though, because if he was redrafted in a draft class, this is technically still his draft class. You could take Austin Reeves here. What's that? No, nah, I meant I meant disrespectful wasn't like if I don't take Jalen Green. <laughs> no, no. If you take Austin Reeves, I'll take Jalen Green. I was gonna take Jalen Green next, regardless. Okay. Um, he can't go, he can't slide out the lottery. That's he can't he's slide. tweaking out. Sliding out the lottery is crazy. So tell you what, look, yeah. I'll go, I'll go AR. Because it's right. technically it's his draft guys, and then you say you're going uh, uh Jalen Green. Jalen Green. Jay, so what pick would Jalen Green be? <laughs> the 12th. Oh, he almost slid. He almost slid. Sheesh, that's crazy. This and is a loaded obvi- draft class, though. It's it's a really good draft class. And obviously, yeah. if you're a big Jalen Green guy, you're a fan of his like you know his upside. Feel like he can clean up his game a little bit. He definitely obviously has a case to be higher than some of oh, you yeah. guys to put ahead of him, but. Like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a good draft class. You know what I mean? Right. It's, a, it's a good draft class. Now, I might be out of my mind with this pick here. I feel like I know who you're about to say. <laughs> I might be out of my mind. I'm considering it. Let me just hold on. Let me let me let me scout the landscape real quick and go over <laughs> all my prospects. The upside though is, <sighs> but it also is, all right. My, right now, I'm stuck between. The unknown upside mm-hmm. or the solid, you know, I can Role get a guy. Yeah, but I'm a, I like risk. Give me Trey Man. I knew you were gonna say <laughs> Trey Man. Give, <laughs> give me Trey Man, bro. Because the upside is yo, the upside is crazy. You saw what he's doing right now. He's hooping, bro. bro. Is hooping. Do you see how much space he began on his step backs, bro? Yeah, bro. He looked like baby Shay. It is crazy. I'm so glad that he's out of out of OKC now. I'm so glad, bro. Yeah, he needed he needed minutes. He needed minutes, bro. He's too. He's way too good of a hooper to not get minutes. Hornets, Grant Williams era four game winning streak. I'm just saying. Hey, four and up. They move the ball. They, they pass the ball over there. That's they, what he says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so dead. <laughs> but you yeah, know, I ain't gonna lie. I just. The upside is too much for me to pass up on, man. I gotta go trade man here. Okay, what pick are we on? This is will be the fourteenth. Okay, this this will be the end of the lottery. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna talk through my thought process because we I, there's a couple of guys here. Off the top, I'm looking at I'm looking at Quinn Grimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whoa. Oh, this is this is no. Nah, I was my bad. It's just it's oh. a good draft class. My bad. It's just oh, a yeah. really good draft class. There's some names that definitely could argue be higher. Oh yeah, I'm looking at Quinn Grimes. <clears throat> it's crazy that I get he hadn't got drafted, but he just or Suggs. Like, uh, Suggs too. Ooh, that's, what, that's why I said oh. Suggs so I'm a, like, yeah, Suggs another guy. Suggs this year, Jalen Suggs like he really has found his role. Exactly. Jalen Suggs, Josh Giddy. Are you a Davion Mitchell guy? I am a big Davion Mitchell fan. He was another guy that I was thinking about here. Zaire Williams. Really is between the, the, the three of them. You can go Kai Jones. <laughs> <laughs> the GOAT. You can go to GOAT. Bro, did they ever say what, what, what was good there? Like, do we know. know or I, I gotta know. Google it real quick because like what's what's he been on, bro? Was he? I think I think he's hooping in like some other league. I see, I think I've seen a clip on Twitter. So I hope he's straight, bro, because that video was concerning. Very much. Um, so. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Suggs, bro. I I'm, I'm taking the defense over over uh, what I potentially could have got. Uh, obviously, all three of those guys are good defenders between Quentin Grimes and and Suggs and Davion Mitchell, but Suggs is just. Or especially early this season, the, the people were starting to comp him. Marcus Smart, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scrappy, he found a, a role that he can excel in. And I'm still a believer <clears throat> that the offense will, will come around a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I don't think it's ever going to hit what it may have been projected to. But, bro, in high school, Suggs was – you know he was Mr. Football and Mr. Basketball, I think, in Minnesota yeah. at the same time. I didn't know that. I know he was nice at football. He was a quarterback, right? 
Yeah, he was yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, I'm, he was dumb, nice and full. I remember that. Yeah. I didn't know he won that, but I, I remember he was – yeah, because they were showing his football highlights. He was crazy. He was going crazy. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure he won Mr. Football the same year he won Mr. Basketball. He, but That's OD. I, that's, no, that's crazy. That's a, that's a wild flex. Like, nobody, Radio facts. I'm nobody in this league can touch me. Yeah. So that's the, that's the whole lottery. So then, like, first people out, at least notable people that, that wouldn't be lottery, no giddy. Uh, no Davion Mitchell, no Zaire Williams. Book Knight is out the league. Primo, I think, is back in the league, which is crazy. I'm not even going to talk Don't about that. Did. Okay, yeah. Moses Moody. Yeah, Duarte. Uh, Quinn Grimes, Bones Highland. Um. I think that's really all the most notable. Oh, and Deuce McBride, too. We getting kind of far out of even consideration for that, but just notable guys who are uh this is, this is a deep draft class, bro. You yeah, know, this is good. Even like bro, a guy like uh Aaron Wiggins, Aaron Wiggins be hooping his mind off for the Thunder this year. Thund- yeah. <laughs> he be going crazy the game I went to against the Spurs. He had like 28. He's he going tweaked st- out. He be going stupid, bro. Yeah, this is See, a, that's-, that's a deep draft class. I feel like this draft class is like one of the most fun to do a, a a redraft with because you can argue so many different right. like ways. Like I'm I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there that's like, man, give me Ever Mobley over Cade, give me Scotty over Cade. Like somebody, people... it's a lot of people out there who probably would take Scotty and Evan over Cade. Right. And so yeah. To be fair, they got arguments for it. I wouldn't agree with them, but like I'll mm-hmm. hear it out. It's there's there's logical reasons why you would do that. Right. Um, that's why I picked this one. I thought it would be the most interesting to kind of go through. Facts. This was fun, though. No, I like that. We're going to have to do that again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, here we are. After the All-Star break, zooming, 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 zooming through this season, man. Yes, sir. Um, Actually, I, I want to do one more thing real quick. Talk to me. We're going to do a, a tier list. Mm. And this is 100% solely to put on TikTok because it's going to go crazy. <laughs> Tear list of. I need you to rank these NBA 2Ks. <laughs> All right, bet. Bet, bet, bet. So I'm, 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 dipping, I'm dipping back to the, to the OG <sighs> ones. Some of, the, some of the kids these days, y'all might not know about this one. First one. <sighs> Where are we putting Michael Jordan on the cover 2K11, the OG with the Jordan challenges, bro? It's a tier list of so like S A. Yeah, 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 yeah. S. S? Up there. I think S. 11, 11, 11 was, yeah, because it, it wasn't even for the reasons of like park or anything like that. Just as far as just like 2K, it was up there, bro. 2K, it, 2K11 was up there. Okay. What about. 2K18. Where are you putting 2K18? How low does it go? How low does the tier list go? Because it's the lowest. <laughs> yeah, it's as F. low as it can get. 2K18 okay. was one of the worst. F. That's the snatchback meta, right? Everybody... That is the snatchback. That is the... Is that shoving? No, no, no. 19 was shoving. But Oh, I forgot <laughs> about shoving. Because shoving got, shoving got patched. Shoving definitely got patched. But it was in there. I was on the tools getting shoved in the back, bro. I was on the tools doing that. Or getting, getting, like, getting shoved. That's crazy that that even was in the game, bro. <laughs> Sick, bro. Sick. It took months to get patched, bro. Oh, uh, okay. Where are we putting 2K13? Who's on the cover? That's the triple cover to KD, Blake Griffin, Derrick Rose soundtrack produced by Jay Z. Okay, yeah, I just put all I just put all of them on front of me. Okay, thirteen. That's like B. I was like B. Two K thirteen was I. Right. So I don't think two K maybe. 13, no, 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 no. That was my team. Was that prime my team year? That I think I think two K thirteen was the first year they did my team. I think. Mm, a. I'll put it A then because if that's the my team year, I'll put it A. Bro, 2K13 is so nostalgic. The freaking, the Jay-Z intro when you load it up, the public mm-hmm. service announcement, like, nah, bro. 2K13 was it. I'll put it, I'll put it A, I'll put it A. 
All right, where are you putting 2K17? Paul George loading screen. Listen, it had its problems. It had its problems. But if you're talking about peak park fun, Ooh. that's S, bro. That's maybe that the hour. S. That, that's S, bro. Because listen, in the park. Nah, you, I, I'm not hearing. No, if anybody trying to come at 2K17 slander, I'm not hearing it, bro. You wasn't there. You wasn't old enough. You, you wasn't, wasn't old there. enough. Yeah. You, there. you wasn't there. You, you wasn't that, that on was... Sunset Beach. You wasn't on Sunset Beach with the momentum crosses, bro. You, you, was there, not, bro. you was not up there dribbling like that. You was not out there going crazy with a pure shark, going crazy with, crazy with the pure playmaker. You wasn't up there doing that, bro. Mm-hmm. That was like peak us, like. High school, like that was like peak two K right, right there. Fo- football practice, we in a group of bros. Get on, we about to run. You yeah, know that's S, that's S for sure. I had, had so with that. many builds that year, bro. I think I probably legitimately probably had eight or nine maxed out builds, bro. Because it was twenty dollars for a build. That was the thing. It was twenty dollars to get enough VC to make a build and buy mm-hmm. all the animations and some clothes on top of it. Come on, man. We did. We not. It was days, perfect. Bro. I was using that Barnes and Noble check quick. Mm-hmm. Give me that. Nah, I need that. I need that point four. Nah, I need that athletic finisher. I right. need that that post score. I <laughs> need the post score. The athletic went crazy. I remember that. The athletic and the pure playmaker used to go stupid. Oh my gosh. Okay. That was fun. Just one year prior, where are you putting 2K16? So personally, I actually didn't play that much of 16. If I'm going off of consensus, consensus will say S. I didn't play enough of it, but I will put it S because, like, I swear, if I don't say S, people are going to, like, come from my head, bro. So I'll just <laughs> I'll put it S. Uh, 2K16 was when they had Rivet on the roof, right? River City was, like, yes. the rooftop course. Yes. But that was also that was also the same year that they had the crazy demigod bills in there. It was, but to, I mean, like the little bit I played, it was fun. Don't get me wrong, it was fun. My to me, p- peak was seventeen. That was my peak because like two questions was like right before me. But I, I'll leave it as because that's just I feel like yo, bro. People, I'm telling you, bro. You talk bad about sixteen, bro. They only had no seventeen was seventeen was it, bro. Where are we putting two K twenty? This is very very like major uh, minority for me. I I love twenty. Like personally, I I had legend on twenty. I think I that was twenty. And I had legend. I think it was twenty. One of the, yeah, it was two K twenty. I had legend on twenty. So yeah, that's it's a for me. I'm not gonna put an S because it had its problems, but it, it's a for me. That this was like pandemic. Everybody yes. was on the game. Like everybody, everybody was, was on the game. The game. So I put I'll where's put that twenty one. Right, because no, no, no. 2K... It was, it was 20, I'm trust, bro. Oh, no, it got to be, it got to be, got to be, yeah, you're right. I'll tell you, everybody was on the game in 20. So, yeah, I put it A. It was, it was, it was good. It was really good. Off the strength of that, because, bro, I'm not going to lie, isolation, lockdown, quarantine, 2K runs was different, bro. I'm telling you, bro. That, that was, was another different. peak time, bro. Yeah. I had legendary. I had legend in 20. I really was, yo, bro, that's what I was on, my Shit in 2K. I was a <laughs> demon in 2K, bro. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. That was, bro, 2K20, bro. There was, even though I was wrong, you could not tell me there was 10 guards better than me in that game. I don't care what nobody say, bro. I would go to my grave yeah. saying that. I was hoping on them in 2K20. In I was there. We was working. Bro, we used to hop on his tools. Mascots, other legends, dropping them off, bro. Bro, was running it up. Off. Running it up. And I'm, what? I'm cooking. I like, bro. Cooking, I, bro, I miss it. I need to get back to that. I ain't gonna. I need to get back to that. Last one. I think this was the first year they had the city, or the, the, they might just call it the neighborhood. Two K nineteen. Very, very, very like in the minority here because two K nineteen was to me by far, and it's not even close. The best dribbling two K in, in, ever. It was the best dribbling two K. It was not, bro, because. You could have, bro. You could have G Man's type of dribbling. You could have Steezo's type of dribbling. You could have. You they could make your did. own. People used to have crazy different styles. Everyone had a different style, and I, to me, dribbling is the most fun thing in two K. I feel like two K went downhill when they try to take out dribbling. So to me, it's A. I ain't gonna say S because they had shoving in the game for months. Like it, that almost ruined, it almost ruined the whole game. To me, it's a strictly off of the dribbling. 
that's about it. And and they had um, yeah, I I did I I had its problems. <laughs> it, it, bro, it had shoving. It had that's when stretch bigs could just shoot over you. Nah, you off no the strength of that, you can't put it in an egg. <laughs> off bro, the strength I, of that, you can't. bro, because it's it's two K nineteen the same two K where you could have the playmaking stretch, right? Yeah, you had stretch bigs out here doing the uh, uh, behind, spamming the behind the back till they got an ankle breaker. Nah, off the strength of that, it can't be an A. It can't be an A, bro. You had that you had, was a terrible game for bigs at first, bro. I'm not gonna lie, it had shoving, it had stretch big shooting over you, it had the uh, circle, circle like glitching off the ball. Oh, the dexing, oh the my dex, gosh. yeah, it had that. I ain't gonna lie, this was, I know this was a struggle. This <laughs> it was a struggle, but the dribbling was. Right, it was peak. Right, it was peak. I'll put it B though. I'll put it B because it had mad problems. It had okay, so, so which problems? Which ones did you have in S? You had I had eleven. Okay, I had yeah. uh, 17. 17, 16. I think that's it. Okay, yeah. That's yeah, fair. yeah, I think that's it. And mother, these recent two kids, it don't even matter. Yeah, we got to talk about those. <laughs> But I, that listen, I listen, I I always I would been in the um like people always hated my two K nineteen take because it's strictly dribbling based because the dribbling was so good, bro. You got so much fun in that game. Dribbling was elite. It was the stretch. The stretch bigs was jumping nah. is not okay. I'm in a face like this, open. There's <laughs> no yeah. way, bro. Wide open. It was a, it had bro. It had so many problems, and I always had a small guard on the twos. Still going crazy against. They used to run two stretches, stretch glass yes. cleaner, two bigs on the twos. Yeah, I I gotta, I gotta be B. It can't go higher than B. Yeah, it can't. It can't. It's too much cheese that was being exploited, bro. Mm -hmm. And it's like people gonna exploit cheese in every single. T Honestly, I feel like gaming as a whole, more than ever before in our life, people. If there's any type of cheese, is getting exploited to the fullest now. Not, yeah, but not it's it's way worse if 2K is like enabling it where so much of it. Like if it's one thing, it's not ever. But like you just said, we just listed off like six or seven different things that people was cheesing or spamming with, bro. Cannot be higher than B. Bro, I had a 6'4 playmaking sharpshooter or whatever the fuck it was called. And I was on the twos having to deal with, well, we were on the twos having to deal with a stretch and a glass cleaner. The glass cleaner shoving us in the back to get the stretch open. Who can also shoot over us heavily contested and with right. and on the inbound also can dex behind them to get wide open. It was like twos was hell, bro. That game was hell for twos. We was we was bro. Why do we even do that? Because when we because when I got the ball, you wasn't getting it back. That's why when we got the ball, it was wraps. Because if you try to help, I'm dotting the corner and it's green. Like stop playing, bro. It was. That's, it was fun though. I, too, listen, it was fun. I give it that. It was mad fun. It definitely was fun, man, man, man. With that though, that's gonna do it for today's episode of the Off the Glass Podcast. As always, if you listen to the whole thing, we appreciate you. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, head over to the audio platforms um, and leave us a five star review. Pre download the show. Follow us on socials. And as always, I'm Billy. That's Dame, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.